basketball players are today's style icons, but there's a pretty big problem with that. Finding fly clothes that fit. That's where designer Isaac Sakib comes in. Yo, Isaac, come here. He's the founder of luxury streetwear brand, Mercy X Mankind. Hey. Hello. So, who have you dressed? I've dressed some great artists like Young Thug, J Balvin, and Juice World, and then some really fresh NBA players. But how does Sakib make eye popping clothes that also fit some of the best NBA players? Welcome to the studio. When it comes to creating something from NBA players, that you can't use your standard men's or women's pattern. Because you have your standard small, your standard medium, your standard large. But with an NBA player, because they don't fit that standard, everything has to be made to measure. So there has to be a pattern made from scratch, essentially off of their particular measurements. Basketball players aren't built like other athletes. They're long and lean, and their disproportionate body measurements break all the rules of manufactured clothing, leaving players like Kyrie Irving to go to designers like Saqib to find something, anything, that makes them look normal. Designing for any high-profile clientele is always complex. It's never an easy task. And people like Kyrie Irving, because he's longer and because his body isn't like an average body size, we had to make adjustments to the fit of the pants, the hip, all the way down to the leg opening to make sure that his foot would fit inside. And then bigger, way bigger people like Chris Copeland, we had to make many adjustments just to make sure that he fits into that coat the way he wants it to fit. Sometimes making stuff for NBA players can be really nerve wracking, but other times it's not too bad. Someone like Kyrie Irving is like a little bit bigger than average, but someone like Chris Copeland or like Carl Anthony Towns that we made a jacket for, they're like monsters. You know, these guys are like six, nine, seven feet. And it's really weird because their torsos will not always be um, super abnormal. Like they might have like a regular size torso, but their the length of like their arms is like huge. You know, and their height is huge, and then their their hips are bigger than normal. You know. But perfecting the fit is just one part of it. The technical part. Players want clothes that reflect who they are. Sometimes that means going loud and flamboyant, and other times it's choosing something a little quieter that still stands out. You know, if they're spending that much money, they want something that's not just gonna be overlooked. But in the same sense, you have NBA players like Chris Cope and like Kyrie Irving, they want something a little bit more subtle. They don't want something that's super loud, they wanna be comfortable. And the pants that we made for Kyrie Irving were just a regular pair of distressed like suit trousers. It wasn't anything bold or special, but it's something that he liked and something that you know he's probably gonna rock on a daily basis. The fact that we make everything here in New York and the fact that we're in a major city and we're able to meet with them and discuss with them, that helps us a lot because we're able to create these fly clothes for them that they can rock, you know, walking into their arena. We're able to provide that because we make everything here. So we can make everything made to measure essentially. But when did arena tunnels become runways for the top NBA players? It all started with a fight. The Detroit Pistons were hosting the Indiana Pacers in a heavily contested regular season NBA game between two championship contenders. With less than a minute left, a few of the players get into a fight, raising tension in the building. A few moments later, a fan in the crowd hurls a drink directly at the Pacers' Ron Artest, and a full-scale brawl occurs. The teams and players at the center of this event were champions and all-stars. The NBA was hit with the PR crisis. And one way to address it was attire. Baggy t-shirts, sweatpants, snapbacks, and jewelry. That was the typical look for NBA players back in the early 2000s, before Malice in the Palace. And David Stern, the NBA commissioner at the time, wasn't a big fan. Journalists and fans constantly linked urban style trends with the league's, quote, thug-like reputation. Make no mistake, this was and still is a pretty far-reaching racist assumption. Stern responded to the brawl by implementing the NBA's first ever dress code. Players were no longer allowed to freely express themselves, but were now required to dress in business casual attire during any team or league business. Like, okay, now we gotta, we gotta you know, really dress up and we can't just throw on a sweatsuit. 
Uh, then it became a competition amongst guys. Players changed the narrative. They took the restrictive dress code into their own hands and transformed a pregame walk into, well, a catwalk. Off-court attire became an excuse to dress up, be creative, and express yourself. And the fashion industry took notice. Now, brands and fashion designers like Saqib turn to basketball players to showcase their latest looks. People are always looking for the next best thing, right? So they always want to be the first ones to rock like a new brand or a new designer. And the fact that I'm upcoming and I'm unique in the sense that I don't come from a fashion house, I think that kind of makes me attractive in that sense. Finding clothes that fit remains a daily struggle for players like Irving and Copeland, but it's more important than ever because post-game discussions are no longer restricted to a player's on-the-court performance. Their appearance off the court could just as easily become a national headline.